Good afternoon. This is Robert Rayburn here at LifePro Asset Management. It is October 23rd of 2023, and I'm glad that everyone could join us uh, this week. It's, it was another crazy geopolitical week as it relates to the mess that's going on in the Middle East. Obviously, a significant war that, ta that is taking place between Israel and Gaza. And really, you know, our big question is whether the market is underpricing the risk that this war spreads. Now, as an investor, as someone that holds that owns stocks, that can seem scary. That could seem like, well, maybe I should just sell everything. Uh, to us, we actually look at it as both a risk and an opportunity. For, for those investors who are overweight energy, it introduces a short-term catalyst to complement the long-term catalyst that we're really focused on. For other areas, that might be more cyclically exposed outside of energy, it can produce a risk. For those stocks that have high valuations, it can produce a risk like we saw last week. So this week, we're going to go through how the Middle East, really, when we think about it, is a classic great power proxy war between the West and other emerging powers or centers of power, such as China, Russia, Iran, uh, and many smaller groups across the Middle East that represent sort of that that uh, the, the global South, as it's now referred to. So there's three things we're going to go through this week. We're going to do a stock market correction update. For those who've been tuning in, we have been fairly uh, consistent on since the beginning of August that we're in the middle of a stock market correction. And, you know, we got to pick our spots wisely um, uh, for those in our growth portfolio. Uh, Q3 was a good good quarter. Why? Because we're focused on energy. We're focused on areas that benefit from this turmoil. Uh, number two, the path of least resistance for interest rates. Uh, everyone's trying to call a top in the rates market. We have a bit of a different view. We're going to go through that. And then lastly, the short and long-term setup for energy stocks. So let's go ahead. Let's get started. We put this chart, uh, we put this chart up last week, and uh, it's about the Israel-Palestinian war. Now, we believe that the war, uh, that the market may be underpricing the risk of this, that this conflict spreads. We've seen significant uh, conflict and confrontation on the Israeli-Lebanese uh, border, particularly with the group of Hezbollah. Uh, Hezbollah is backed by Iran, uh, and we obviously have backing of Iran from the Houthis in Yemen, and of course, certain factions within Iraq. And the U.S. military is intimately involved in all of these arenas. So uh, we did, there was a particular incident that took place on Thursday where a U.S. warship intercepted missiles from Houthis that went toward Israel. So we think that there is a, a risk uh, that the market is not pricing this conflict correctly. And that's why we love energy here, right? So when we think of what are the sectors that can do well, both during times of war and geopolitical instability, inflation and rising interest rates, but at the same time, rising U.S. and emerging market demand, energy fits right there, gobsmack in the middle. And that's why we love energy. As it relates to the broader market, we've been, again, very consistent. We're in this distributive fashion when we saw these violent rallies. They lack that breadth. They lack that participation and that what we call that rally thrust that tends to be uh, symptomatic of a new bull market. We just weren't seeing that. We didn't. We weren't seeing that volume of participation during these short-term rallies uh, throughout August, September, and early October. Our whole thing has been, is so long as the market is making lower highs and lower lows, we want to be careful. And we think there's still some downside left in this particular sell-off until we can get an oversold bounce. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, we do expect some continued downside risk to the broad index. That does not mean, I want to be very, very clear, that there are not pockets within the market to make money. We do think that energy is an area that we can make significant money during this time, clear and present right now. As it relates to interest rates, two-year interest rates, 10-year interest rates, you know, when we had that big check back of, I think it was probably five or six uh, trading sessions ago, where the 10 year went from about 4.8 to 4.6, everyone was like, it's over. You know, <laughs> interest rates are going back to four. Our whole thing has been that's unlikely because inflation hasn't really uh, slipped below 4% yet. And 
The other big thing is that no one on Wall Street is positioned for 5% interest rates, which tells us the path of least resistance may go, may go higher. And we see that here. So when we look at the 10-year yield surveys, so we look at all of the uh, all of the strategists on Wall Street, where do they believe that both the average uh, 10 year yield will be over the next two years? And what is the high observation point? What we see here is that no one is at 5%, right? Doesn't matter whether we're talking Q4 2023, Q1 2024, all the way to 2025, everyone has their forecast below 5%. And we actually touched 5% on Friday. So I want to be very clear. We're still in the five and a quarter camp. And if we get to five and a quarter and these estimates haven't moved up, we're going to ratchet that up to five and a half. Because historically, that's actually not that crazy. And we see that again here, the 10-year yield forecast. Um, you know, what's the highest forecast for Q4 of this year? 4.6. Then what about Q1 of next year? 4.5. No one is at 5%. Everyone is assuming it is 100% consensus, consensus that rates have peaked. We think we're on the other side of the ship. We're lonely, but we're on the other side of the ship here, and we think rates go above 5%. Now, it's important to remember, rising interest rates, geopolitical conflict can sound scary, but there are certain areas that do very, 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 very well. Now, we don't like to play a geopolitical trade just for the geopolitical trade. Why? Because at some point, geopolitical instability comes to an end. Um, so we got to be really careful there. So there are two uh, areas of the market that have actually acted quite well over the last two or three weeks. Oil is up 552 basis points, so 5.5%, and gold's up 5.7%. Now, we prefer oil over gold. Uh, why? Because gold is far more cyclical. It's more of a trade. Um, especially if U.S. dollar goes down. Oil, on the other hand, we believe that there's both a short, medium, and long-term catalyst at the fundamental side to drive oil prices and oil stock valuations higher from these levels. So why are we so bullish on energy? Inventories keep on dropping as supply dries up. Demand, meanwhile, continues to grow. We're going to show you a shocking chart out of China Everyone's pessimistic on China, but demand in China continues to rise, and we haven't even seen a real recovery yet. Um, number three, ma the major swing supplier is the Middle East. Where is all the geopolitical risk happening right now? Right, gobsmack in the Middle East. Number four, the structural lack of long-term investment in the ground. This is one of our core theses long-term, is that when you look at the amount of dollars going into the ground to invest in future production, it has dried up over the last five or six years. You don't just develop an oil field overnight and bring that production on. It's going to take years to recover from the, the seven-year investment depression that we saw in the energy patch. And then lastly, M&A, merger and acquisitions. We've already seen uh, Pioneer get bought out. We uh, we had uh, in our growth portfolio, we were holders of uh, Pioneer. So we stay attuned to the M&A story there. And we got to say, we think that's the first of many uh, shoot, uh, dominoes that are going to drop in the M&A space uh, within energy. Um, number two is, of course, the energy internals continue to improve. So when we look here at the energy uh, sector relative to the S&P 500, Despite what's been happening in the overall market and a lot of the scary things that are happening today, energy continues to improve on a relative strength basis. So despite two weeks ago, some of the concerns over recession and OPEC and the ending of the Fed rate hikes and blah, 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 energy continues to quietly outperform and an absolute price basis coming out of this huge base long term. We believe energy is entering into what we call phase two of a long-term bull market, right? So the, the historic bull market in the 2000s, we saw energy outperform the S&P 500 by 284%. Since then, we have been essentially in a 13-year bear market for energy stocks, and now we've started to break out. So this initial breakout in 2021-22 was the first phase, right? That 
the phase that, hey, energy is not going to zero. We had a check back, which we experienced, of course. And now we believe we're entering phase two. We believe that these relative strength highs can challenge the high points from over here. But if even if we have a 283% rally to match the 283% relative strength rally of the S&P uh, versus the S&P 500 and 2000s, we still have 70% upside just on that minor move alone. And we think there's more upside than that. What's driving that? Lack of investment, rising demand, very cheap valuations, and great power competition that put a premium on national security resources such as energy, oil, and gas, and copper. And again, in China, going back to this multipolar world, this great power competition, who else needs a lot of oil aside from the U.S. and the West? Well, China. China is actually the number one consumer of oil and petroleum products. And what we see here is that daily oil refining is at its highest on record. And China's still experiencing a sluggish recovery. What's going to happen when China starts clicking on all cylinders? So in summary, we got a fragmented world. We believe the S&P 500 remains in correction mode. Energy is quietly outperforming short and long term. But interest rates have also hit 5%. Right? Wall Street remains well behind the curve thinking that we will never get the five. We're actually five and a quarter. We think potentially if we had five and a quarter, five and a half is next. So that's what we got for you this week. Please feel free to reach out to your advisor and we're here to answer any questions you may have. Have a fantastic week. Thank you again.